just let me just start with, uh, does anybody here want to get rich?
as a, as a mobile application in terms of volume, size, number of engineers, everything. So in Stellenbosch, obviously, it's difficult to avoid. And I heard these uh, rumors that you know, the shareholders had a bit of fallout. So I thought to myself, well, maybe, um, maybe I can step into this crack. Of course, I never actually thought I'd ever buy it. Because as far as I was concerned, it was a platform for pedophiles. But, you know, all my engineers kept telling me how big it was. Um, so I thought, oh, well, yeah, have a look at this thing. Look under the hood. The various you know, what mistakes they made and what successes they had. And, and hopefully uh, not make the mistakes and repeat the successes. But anyway, I got into the stand thing. And she saw I was, uh, I was quite impressed. Um, turned out uh, turned out to my pedophile perception was probably in inaccurate. And uh, we, yeah, that was a long story. We tried to raise about 850 million rand to buy it. Um, it wasn't all for that many weeks gap as well, failed. Uh, and then a couple more weeks, kind of a month or two later, we managed to renegotiate it to a better price, managed to get the money. And um, I think it was the 19th of October last year, we bought it, um, took it over. So, you know, for like a nothing thing, a nothing company like World of Air, that was quite a big thing. And, uh, and then suddenly we had this uh, you know, jewel, as far as I was concerned. I mean, there's nothing like it on the continent. I mean, just to put it in context, you know, whilst, most, whilst the users are all under the age of 30, mostly, say, 23, 22, there are 62 million of them in 126 countries. How many of you guys have got that many customers in that many countries? And it runs out of one office in Stellar Washington and has 150 employees. And it grows every day between 20,000 and 50,000 a day. Now, that's my kind of business. You don't have to keep hiring people, no offense to the HR guys. You don't have to keep, uh, you don't have to keep building new offices, you don't have to keep investing, it's totally scalable. You just sit at home and, and your exact fixed cost overhead and investment up front gets expected every day by new customers coming up. And um, also, you know, aside from the success around growth, it's a success in terms of tech, big tech. So, Vodacom does about 30 million SMSs a day. Uh, Twitter, which most of you have heard of, does about 400 million messages a day globally. Tw uh, mix it, we do up to 850 million messages a day. So, just at a pure big tech level, this is a huge achievement. I mean, Americans can't believe it. They think you've got to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to build that kind of tech. And these guys built in a sandwich for a couple of million. So, Shows it's possible, it shows you can build hugely scalable tech out of either South Africa. Um, and then the last thing is, and this is I think applicable to South Africans especially, I read a book recently called Mindset by Carol Dweck, and it explained uh, how, yeah, where the fear of failure comes from, uh, growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. So about 20 years ago, Americans realized, American psychologists realized that if you keep criticizing your kids every time they do something wrong, does this sound like South African parenting? <laughs> and get clucked and all that stuff. What happens is they stop trying new things because they know the consequences of making a mistake with pain. Now in America, 20 years ago, they realized this, that they stopped criticizing their kids and they started just complimenting. Confidence and compliments, confidence and compliments. I mean, if, if the teacher wrote in the scorecard, Jimmy needs to work in his maths, the, te the parents would go to school and shout at the teacher and sue the school for destroying their child's self-esteem. So, but that also creates a fear of failure because people don't get any feedback and they just start defining themselves as a great success all the time because that's all they've been told they are and then of course they don't want to try new things in case they don't live up to what their definition was and I think that's the interesting thing um, so you've got to be you've got to be more focused on the process than on the result and you've also got to be willing to look like an arsehole you know and it's like you walk up to a girl at a bar and you say, hi, how are you? And they you, they just don't talk to you. So, you know, you know, they take a chance of rejection. You want to like and apply for a job to be the PA to the CEO or the CEO. And you know, the guys just laugh at you. You know, you take a chance. That, that's all in the end. A lot of that stuff, especially for me at least, in terms of how I was brought up, that kind of brings like cold shivers to myself when I, when I think of the potential embarrassment. But the trick is for me to put yourself out there. Because if you don't put yourself out there, no one's going to come to find you especially in these big countries. Lots of people like that. The world is busy. People don't have time to come and find you. You, know? you, have, to go and get, you have to go stand in the light so people can see what's going on. And you have to be comfortable with the consequences of standing in the light, which is sometimes you see stuff that you don't want to see. And sometimes you fall over in the light and people are going to laugh at you. But that's the only way you'll ever get ahead. And I'll tell you, the line that keeps 
me going, like makes me feel really confident. Well, it makes me like ignore that stuff. There's something that's some advice a friend of mine gave me a while ago. And I'll conclude with it before we go to question questions and questions if you have any. And that is the people who matter don't care. The people who care don't matter. Thank you very much. Thank you.